every time you get in the car, do 10 repetitions and make <laughs> sure make sure the other guy next to you sees you doing it. Give him a wink because every, everybody's okay. going to feel weird. Uh, we'll blame that on Brad and Bob then, okay? <laughs> you get one of those little pop-up signs that I'm just stretching. <laughs> Well, we've been doing it. We've been reviewing a little bit of Bob and Brad, physical therapist. If you don't know about them, they're pretty great. And it's a really good tool. They've got ungodly amounts of videos, but uh, two unique exercises that we've seen over and over. We've talked about them before. Let's get into it a little bit. If you've got a bad shoulder. I really like this yeah. shoulder exercise. Uh, I've been doing this for years. It, we've it, been talking about it. And then to see it on here just helps me realize these guys know what they're doing. So. Oh yeah. They, they, they go over so many different things that, uh, it's very helpful, but this shoulder stretch is probably what I'm shoot. I don't know. We made a video in 2010 about this stretch and it's so cool to see it here because it really is one of the most effective shoulder stretches that if you've got some pain in your shoulder, I always tell people to do it in the shower and everybody thinks it's kind of weird, but if you throw a washcloth in there, it'll keep you going uh, on a little bit more of a consistent basis. But as you see in the video, they kind of are talking a little bit about the range of motion in your arm. So when you hook it or you hold a towel and you slide that shoulder up, most of the time, any shoulder that you're feeling a little bit of pain in or you slightly have impingement, normally it's not going to go near as high as the other hand. So it's an easy indication to know pretty much right out of the gate that you've got too much tightness. And if you alleviate some of that, you kind of get rid of that naggy thing that's going on. Well, what happens is if you can get some of your mobility back, now all of your activities or other activities become a lot easier to do. I don't have shoulder pain, but I sort of have tightness and stiffness. It's, and like, a, it's like a pinchy just, thing going it on. It just kind of like yeah. that dish, you know? So then if I'm going to do some kind of activity, I just take about five minutes and do this and you can do it with towel, a rope, golf I club. With, any, uh, yeah, you can do it I've with anything. I've done it with a golf club. I've done it with a small resistance band and you just, after you do it, do it right. Make sure that you're going slow enough to don't just bring that thing way up there. Yeah. So if you're just listening on Spotify and you, you don't know exactly what we're talking about, well, let me explain it to you a little bit. So imagine you're going to use your left hand and you slide it around on the lower part of your back. Now you'll throw a towel, a resistance band, a belt, anything that you have that's got a, some you know tightness to it. It's not going to stretch too awful much. And all you're going to do is slide your hand up your back and then you'll lay that hand on your shoulder. So your right hand will come over your shoulder. And what you'll do is you'll take a little bit of a deep breath, bring all that air in, and then let it out. And as you feel your shoulder sag, what you'll feel is a ton of tension in the joint. And if you don't have pain on one shoulder, miraculously... You're not going to have any pain when you lift that baby up. So. It's great. Make sure that you, you, because I'll go up and then I'll release it, then maybe go a little bit higher. And if you start to feel that twinge, then you know you're. Yeah, you're don't, you going make a good too point. Fast. Yeah, don't go into the tension uh, too far. You're basically going to go just give it a little kiss. You get on the edge of it, you feel a little bit of pressure. That's all fine. Hold it for 10, 15, 20 seconds. The first one, I always recommend doing a little bit shorter. Let that joint move a little bit. Give yourself like a 10-second set, then lower the hand down a little bit. Move it around, and then take yourself a nice 20, 25-second set. Do that three or four times, and then what you'll find is when you let go of that hand and you let it drop down, it basically feels like you need an amputee because your arm barely works. <laughs> well, I mean, it really... You'll, you'll also notice that, okay, now, yeah. Yeah, just give now it, I feel better. I've got range of motion. I've got mobility. Yeah, give it one second and that thing will feel a whole lot better. But hands down, probably one of the, the biggest exercises that is utilized after shoulder surgeries for pitchers, biggest stretch that you could possibly do it if you have any kind of impingement that pretty much no one is doing. This should be as regular as putting your foot on a step and just stretching your hamstring a little bit. This should be as regular as stretching your forearms out a little bit if you're always typing and your grip is tired and those sorts well, of things. Well, this is one of those that are on Bob and Brad's list of things you should do every day. It just takes two or three minutes. Right. It's not a very difficult exercise to do and should definitely be done 
uh, very, very frequently. And, and I will say too, if you've got a point at which you notice that it's significantly off, don't force it. You don't have to just really push into it to get the range of the motion. But I promise you within as little as like three or four days, you'll see those hands even out pretty quickly. And then you can always add in some light jobs and different yeah, types of Yeah, as soon as you feel that tweak, let it go, but let it drop and then bring it back up. And then tomorrow be a little bit better and after a few days now I notice that I'm going a little bit higher and I can equal out both of those sides. Right and and if you feel extreme tension when you're stretching and your hands are very off what you'll notice is when you're done stretching and I mentioned this just a minute ago you'll let go and that arm will feel insanely weak. Just give it a second. I just wanted to reiterate that because it'll come back, but don't go crazy and throwing it over your head or switching arms really fast. If you're very tight and you stretch in that impingement angle and you drop your hand, your shoulder will feel very weak for like 30 seconds. It's definitely not a no pain, no gain situation. Yeah, it, it'll come back though. I mean, as soon as you let it sit there for a second, get everything back in place, it'll feel just fine. Well, let's move into the second exercise. Now that, what was that exercise you were talking so about? So that's the, the neck injury one. If you've got a tight neck or if you're always staring at your phone, and I feel like it's probably... One of the best exercises that everybody could do that probably isn't and everyone should. My wife, she's got a super tight neck, always using massage guns and trying to get her traps loosened up because she's got all this tension. But most of the time, it's because everyone has their head hanging forward. Now, let's do the exercise and I'll give you a little bit of backstory on why this exercise was so important. When you look at Bob and Brad, they're physical therapists, of course. What do they say? The What's their line? Oh, uh, uh, in our opinion, or it, the best on the internet. Yeah, in our opinion. You, in you'll our love opinion. That. Uh, but what they do is this exercise is kind of like a you tuck your chin and you're you're walking it back and you should definitely film yourself Don't because do that you, while you're driving. <laughs> okay. yeah. What's funny is I've done it a million times while I'm driving because what you find is like everywhere in life, everything you're doing, you leave your head forward. Well, you know, when you, you've you done this a lot, right? Right. I mean, and actually that exercise is a lot better. You know, it's just... So let's know, talk about it, it really specifically helps. a little bit. So you pull your chin back, but you're actually not looking up per se until you load the spine right. You know, we've talked a lot about scap loading uh, mm -hmm. over the years and how it can help with your shoulder. But in this next exercise, it's kind of almost in parallel. It's the same concept. You're trying to put your body in the right alignment to alleviate pressure out of the joints. So if you've got a little bit uh, too much tightness in your neck, basically it almost straightens out your neck vertebrae and you start getting some pinching going on because the muscles become so tight. Your neck is actually supposed to curve to go to the back of the spine. That's where the spinal cord wraps around and attaches to the top of your but head. You want to watch out and not arch your arch your back you're really trying to focus on the neck right if you can't do this exercise and feel it in the right way uh they recommend and i've seen this before as well that you lay down on the ground and tuck your chin but when i'm doing it i can feel it literally stretch my spine into the middle of my back if you're doing it correctly and you tuck your chin hard, hard into your body. You can literally feel it between your shoulder blades. And when I, so I had a huge injury last year that uh, I had tingling and numbness down my arm. And it was all kind of due to this extreme whiplash that I got trying to learn front flips while skiing. And what had happened was I got so much whiplash that it tightened everything up. And then I had one of the flips, just a terrible crash. And it tweaked me and everything went numb. My fingers, I couldn't feel anything down that. And when we, I got x-rays and started getting a lot of physical therapy and all that kind of stuff, learned a ton about the neck. But what was crazy is at first, I thought that the guy didn't exactly know the symptom properly. I thought it was just a big impact and those kinds of things. But from day one, he was talking about your posture is all wrong when you're on your computer, when you're on your phone, when you're driving in your car, when you're doing all these things, you're tilting it forward. He, he suggested that the only way that I had such a straight spine in my neck, my spinal cord, was from years and years of not properly sitting with proper posture. I thought he was crazy. I thought no way. Like it was a freak accident, right? I did a front flip. It was a freak accident. That's how this happened. And come to find out that as things started to progress, as I loosened up and I started doing all these stretches because I didn't really like seeing my spine that wasn't working right. There's a lot of other contributing factors. And I don't think you realize, even if you don't put your phone here, right? you put it down here, so that's where you're at. And 
you get that little notification of how long you were on your phone today. Oh my God. Well, it, well, it's kind of nuts though. So, so that was my, as I was rehabbing this neck thing, I kind of became more apparent to me that how broad this was. This is actually everybody. Do you have a headache? Do you have tension in your neck? Uh, are you looking down just as much as I was? Cause uh, let me tell you when your arm tingles, when your neck's too tight, you realize every time where your head is. Oh, exactly. So I would be driving in my car. One of the biggest things that I had to change was how I sat in the car. I don't sit back with the seat back too far, but I can't put my head on the headrest. So I had to move my seat up a little bit. He suggested making sure that you put your head on the headrest every time you drive. How do you get that set up like that? I've you, always done that. And it's like, like yeah, this it, like it is this. not comfortable at all, no. but you have to be very upright. upright but again, okay. you know, when you're talking like tingling down your arm and losing sensation in your whole arm for days and days at a time, Hey, I'm willing to try anything. Well, I, of course, if, if, if you tell me a way that I can fix that, I'm in. Right. So that was kind of, what was very crazy about that is I found multiple instances in everyday life that my head was not in the right position. I'm driving in the car, wasn't touching the headrest. I had the seat set to where if I was sitting right, my head was touching the headrest. So that was kind of my go-to for two or three weeks. I was like, oh man, I still not, I'm still not sitting with my head back. I need to get these muscles stretched. So I started doing it in my headrest and then I would do this exercise every single day and I would look like a silly guy if, if any <laughs> if anybody was filming me walking down the road i'm sure they had well, all kinds where's of where's that guy going huh like, you know how how many people really <laughs> i'm sure i every, can't even drive now uh, i'm thinking about this every day I, i'm sure how, how do you drive and just is that being straight up you know i don't know anybody that does that well you have to have a pretty darn upright seat you really do if you want to do it properly but and if you your your seat itself is going to have to be in a proper position but well what's that weird is, what's weird though is if if you do actually set your head back you kind of have the same sensation as you had farther back with your head up does that make sense yeah if you sit really upright and uh, it took me a little while to adjust. But if you sit really upright and you don't lay your head on the headrest, yeah, you feel like this is, this I'm is sitting on weird. a stool. Yeah. Uh, this is not very comfortable like right drive. Now, right, to... right. But if you uh, literally lay your head on the headrest, it does change the whole way you feel quite a bit. It, uh, uh, like I said, I had a pretty crazy injury happen. And it took me quite a while to get the pinching to stop and to get my muscles to relax again. So... I do that all the time and what I'll actually do. So it, it, to speak clearly about this second exercise, what I would strongly suggest is you do the shoulder stuff pretty much nearly every day, but this neck loading thing, try to do, incorporate it throughout your day. It doesn't have to be like this set time, but when you sit down to work, if you're a desk worker, I promise you, if you load your neck about 10 times, tuck your chin back and really make your spine sit like that for the next 30 minutes when you're sitting there, you have extremely different posture because it's on your radar. You're like, you know, it, holy it, moly, I didn't realize that I had my head laying on the keyboard. It looks a little goofy, but if you do that eight or 10 times, it does feel better. No oh doubt. yeah. It, it, it Something about it kind of relaxes all the nerves and things. And, and my wife, she gets tons of tension in her shoulders all the time and wants to use massage guns and things. And I've kind of mentioned it to her, you know, I've, I've rehabbed this over the course of six to eight months and you know, she loves to get advice from me, I'm sure. But I uh, bet she's really into that. Huh? <laughs> but, but it's kind of funny though. Cause it's, you know, when you're watching someone else and it's like, Oh, you're driving with your head forward. You're, you're looking down at your phone. You're on a keyboard all day for work and you got your head forward and all the, all the same things that I had to kind of move through is nearly what everybody's doing. So for me, these two unique exercises are by far some of the most important things that just generally you should be doing. And it doesn't require a sweat first. It doesn't require a warm up. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to be exhausted. It's just no, yeah. something you fit into your day when you have time. And I think what you'll find is that feels pretty good. I'm, I'm glad I did that. Every time you get in the car, do 10 repetitions and make <laughs> sure make sure the other guy next to you sees you doing it. Give him a <laughs> wink because every, <laughs> everybody's okay. going to feel weird. Uh, we'll blame that on Brad and Bob then, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you get one of those little pop-up signs, and, I'm just stretching. <laughs> you do feel pretty goofy doing that stretch, but I tell you, it, it does work quite well. It does. I totally agree. 
How often would you suggest, like, have you done anything in your daily routine or do you have like a thing? I always say this and I don't know why it probably seems so weird, but I am like an avid shower stretcher. I'm in there and it's like a routine. I go through the neck thing. I get my hamstring set my foot up on a ledge. It's just because every time I'm in there, it's like, that's just my well, routine. It's a, it's a good five minute thing because you're not going to be in there very long. But right. if you've also got hot water running on you, yeah. you're feeling better, you're getting the blood flow, it's a perfect time to do it. Yeah. Well, do you have any uh, situations or are you just more of a warm up like before you golf or something? Or do you have I any? do it before I golf or I play ball and, you know, I'll just get in the car maybe and just do that just because I sort of have that nip stick, nip, neck stiffness. Now, my wife says it's because you're constantly looking down at your phone, and she's right. Yeah, so. yeah it is right. I'm sure it, that's everyone in the world. And, so know, start trying when you— like this, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the worst thing about it, though. Once you get in the habit of going through this routine, you're absolutely going to hate me because you'll, you'll do it, <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll hold your phone, and you feel that you're looking down. It's yeah. almost like it wakes it up, and then you're— do it alone though, because you're giving your friends so much <laughs> ammunition. But but again, you will funny. find that it's a great exercise, right. and you know the shoulder exercise is is has really helped me. Um, again, because I have the stiff shoulders. Ah, now you know. Okay, and just do it every day. If you're conscious about it, I need to do that. It doesn't take very long. Yeah, I get it. I agree. Uh, if you need two unique exercises that you should do every day, these are going to be the ones. Make sure you're getting that uh, underhand shoulder stretch as well as, of course, the head bobbing release. Is that, can, I, can I put release in there too? Prob- probably shouldn't. Just the neck relaxer. Tuck the chin, stretch it out.